A very good morning and welcome to uh, Le Sabre de Lune, uh, Sunday morning just after uh, sunrise. And you can see Didac Costa then on board uh, One Planet, One Ocean. Perfect morning to come in the channel. Didac looking fresh as a daisy. We're all setting up to have a quick... Uh, Early morning interview. He'll come into the channel just uh, after eight o'clock. So you speak to the guy who is just near the cameraman. I, yes. I, I look out. Yeah. So we're just setting up, as you can see. Okay. I think we're going to do an interview in. Uh, there we go, Didac. Second uh, Vendée Globe finish last night. So just asking, how did uh, how did your uh, second Vendée Group go? All good. Qu'est-ce qui a été très différent sur ce Vendée Globe que sur le Vendée Globe précédent I'm just doing the first, uh, first interviews in Spanish, hoping to get a translation into, uh, into French, but I said it was very, very different this time round. Last time he was uh, very much on his own, this time he raced uh, with other boats, much more in contact with the, the fleet. Each Vendée Globe is different. He's very happy with the uh, he went. He had good he was very happy with his results, so it went really well this time. Everything went fine. The boat was ready. So just saying that the only the only big problem or only significant problem we had was with the uh, the wind instrumentation, the uh, wind vane, a problem that was in, in common with quite a lot of other skippers uh, in the race. It's a special race, it's a special adventure. So just saying once again, there's a unique, uh, unique race. And this, of course, is uh, Didac's second and his third round the world on the on the same boat. Uh, 
il dit que, oui, que en fait, c'est la chose la plus extraordinaire. Donc, même maintenant, ça fait quelques heures qu'il est arrivé. Il dit que c'est la chose la plus extraordinaire. Il dit que c'est la chose la plus extraordinaire. Il dit que c'est la chose mais chaque jour est aussi une très belle journée, que c'est très difficile à décrire parce que c'est si dur et c'est beau. To describe euh, because it's very, very hard, but it's incredible. It's very hard to be here. Happy with your place, Frenchy. Bueno, el lugar realmente es algo complicado de, de, de valorar porque, por ejemplo, pues la, la pasada edición quedé en mejor posición y tardé muchísimos más días, ¿no? En esta edición pues han han terminado muchos más barcos que en la, en la pasada, ¿no? Así que al lugar, pues bueno, este, este, está este contento porque es, pues, teniendo en cuenta pues, el, el barco que es, ah, pues está por la mitad, ¿no? Pues sí, sí, que, sí que lo valoro, ¿no? Pero más que nada, pues quizá valoro más pues, el, el poder haber bajado de, de 100 días, ¿no? Está a ah, casi 97 días y, bueno, ah, lástima el último tramo del Atlántico Norte que ha sido un poco lento. Ay, quizá pues podría haber hecho un par de minutos menos y hubiese sido perfecto, pero estoy contento sobre todo pues por el por los días que he tardado, ¿no? Que creo que para Eduardo que es pues es una es una buena un buen tiempo y una buena regata. Maintenant, il dit que le classement c'est difficile à juger parce que la dernière Vendée il a fait mieux classement mais il a venu so, dans the last time he was better as far as ranking goes. Il a pu faire 10 jours de moins. But this uh, time, he, he did it with uh, 98 days instead of one. And the, 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 he, he had problems. Uh, the, the, weather, the weather was one of the major problems. So, the question is exactly the same. So, what do you think about your own club? So did that just doing his interview now in uh, Catalan? Of course, we know uh, that uh, Didac does uh, primarily sp Spanish and Catalan, a little bit of French, very, very little bit of English. But he, um, certainly enjoying the moment, enjoying the time now. And uh, pretty sure he stayed, uh, stayed on board last night. So his uh, technical team on board. Uh, yeah. just, uh, for those of you who just joined us this morning, just missed the channel last night, but by a matter of minutes, and they're not prepared to really push, uh, push things too much, get into trouble in the channel. Just saying he's very happy with the, uh, with the team, the very Catalan team. I think we must go now. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We're just heading. Uh, Didac's just going to take charge and head uh, in towards the channel. And then uh, once he docks, we'll have his uh, his press conference immediately afterwards. So a beautiful, beautiful sunrise then. Perfect sunrise, considering that uh, Didac had to stay out overnight. Fairly benign conditions uh and rewarded with a, a lovely sunrise and a Sunday morning. And Anne Laura, we should see some people out on the uh, on the channel this morning. Yeah, I hope so. It's Sunday morning. Everybody uh, here knows should know he's coming because people are really good at it. They're really good at keeping, you know, uh, their information up. Um, so they should really be coming hopefully before they go to the market, and uh, you should get some cheers hopefully. So Didac, um 20th, he was just saying in his interview, he was uh, 14th in the last race, but uh, was uh, much further behind uh, the uh, the winner. And uh, this time, 20th, but uh, a lot closer to the time of uh, Yannick Bestavin. Didac celebrated his 40th birthday on the uh, on the race course the 22nd of uh, of december and we all joined them for that if all our uh, race fans were watching the uh, the vondi live i think that was our first uh, first live video connection with didac on his birthday but it's just indicative of uh, <coughs> how tight his uh, his funds are that uh, it's no secret to reveal that he ran out of uh, ran out of data and so we only had a limited number of uh, connections 
with the video with Dudak. As we said last night, he's going back to work uh, next Friday. Rejoining his uh, his colleagues with the uh, fire service in Barcelona. He looks very happy, uh, Anlor, doesn't he? He looks totally content to be back uh, and uh, enjoying these moments. Everybody on board his boat. I remember joining him uh, four years ago at the same point. And he's just a uh, very serene, relaxed, uh, quiet individual. Yeah, he seems to be really relieved and happy and pe peaceful, I'd say. Uh, it's very interesting to like spend a night on your boat uh, after... Uh, f the finish, uh, and uh, he uh, he's a pretty he's a pretty calm person. You said before, uh, and he does look very serene uh, on his boat, but pretty happy to to come back. You know, to the Sabdaran. I can tell you the guy there at the back of the boat with the uh, mask and the radio is his uh, business partner Pep Costa, who uh, has a company which is a shipping agent and shipping management company in Barcelona. He is a, a mini sailor in his own right and uh, his son also Pep is the up and coming star of uh, mini sailing in Barcelona. And there we go and Lordy's having uh, some of his, uh, his tangerines. Clementines. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, and just to add something, I think it, it, it must have been cold uh, last night on his boat, but I guess he's used to it. But just a little detail is that he did bring a heater apparently last edition and uh, he didn't use it. So um, he didn't bring it this time, but I think he regretted it. Um, anyway, yeah, he's having a little uh, fruit. Uh, you know, probably looking forward to coming in. Uh, is waving to people. Beautiful morning this morning. Cold, but quiet, beautiful morning here in Les Sable. And as we said last night, this is uh, looking forward to the 21st birthday of uh, this famous uh, Emoka, one of the most famous Emokas uh, ever built, built in uh, New Zealand at Martin Yachts, designed by a collaboration, a little group, uh, including uh, Rob Humphreys uh, and uh, Owen Clark. And the, that design team can be incredibly proud today that... Uh, the record of this boat finishing race is, uh, is uh, still 100% for, uh, for round the world races. And once again, certainly a credit to Didac as well himself. Three round the world races, uh, two Vendée Globes and uh, one Barcelona race. And always brought the boat home safely. He'll come into the into the channel in a few minutes. So Didac started sailing with his uh, with his father, and uh, a little bit of information. We were having a WhatsApp conversation with Rich Wilson last night, and he's stayed in touch with. He obviously r raced fairly closely in the end with uh, with Didac. Was in touch with him all the way through his last race, uh, and uh, Rich stayed in touch with him over this race as well and he was saying that uh, Didac, his father was uh, I think a, a jeweler or a jewellery agent uh, and uh, Didac used to go to jewellery shows in the States I think with his father and they sailed together to Norway on a boat that uh, Didac's father built and that was the start of his uh, passion for offshore and ocean racing. <laughs> And uh, for all our Vondi Globe fans, the skyline of Les Sables alone is very much uh, iconic now. Very familiar outline for the skippers when they come back uh, 
to poor finishing the race and come past the uh, Nush Sud, the uh, Nush uh, Cardinal Mark, which uh, forms the finish line. So Dudak doing uh, an interview for his uh, for his own video. In the media boat there just in front. So uh, perfect time to come in uh, eight oh oh eight here in Les Sables de Lone. and we can hear the uh, cheers now. As he approaches the, uh, the channel. And yes, Anne Laura, for sure, the uh, the locals here, they have a kind of um, network of uh, communication. Everybody knows that when uh, a skipper's coming in, no matter what time of day or night it is. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's really funny because uh, when you get on the key just before they arrive, sometimes it's pretty empty and then uh, all of a sudden the boat starts coming in and everybody shows up. Like there is just like, of course, now there is the coronavirus, so we're not supposed to really, you know, gather. But uh, it's pretty magical, actually, that um, just to be to be, you know, kind of alone or like, you know, a few people around you and then all of a sudden people come from nowhere and start to cheer and you know there's a real emotion uh in that that the channel is just something really incredible i think for those guys and this of course is a moment that ddax enjoyed before uh, four years ago and uh, but this time I think he's uh, for sure listening to his interviews and what he said in the uh, immediate uh, period just before the finish much more content much happier with his race last time he was four days and uh, 700 miles behind when he restarted after that problem and that was even uh, after his build-up to the race in uh, 2016 was compromised because his, uh, his boat was struck by lightning uh, uh, one month before the start. And so he had to, to uh, refit the electrics. And so it was all a battle the last time, a race against time twice. So a race against time to get to the uh, start line. And then as soon as he it was only... 45 50 minutes into the race when he had that problem his uh, ballast pipe pulled off and flooded the engine bay he damaged his generator shorted out all his electrics so this uh, is very much uh, a more satisfying race a more satisfying conclu conclusion So yeah, for sure, there's uh, lots of noise, lots of people on the uh, quayside. Nice way to uh, greet another uh, Vondi Globe hero. And Didak, uh, and Lord Didak has got big support from the uh, the uh, Le Sable de Lone Fire Fire Service, hasn't he? Yeah, of course. There is a. Uh definitely like uh, a, a big um, support from from the community um, uh, some kind of solidarity you know I guess four years ago they really were there to help him uh, when he had to come back and uh, you know they helped him with his generator they, they really you know they, they were there for him and I think uh, um, they, they you know um, I don't know if, whether they can be on the keys like they were last time because I remember all the Four years ago, they were uh, the, the trucks, you know, were there with the horns and the lights, and it was pretty cool. Uh, so I don't know if they are going to be able to do it this year, considering this, you know, the whole 
corona virus thing but um but yeah i think he's always you know it's his second family i guess here and does indeed and as we said last night unfortunately his uh, his family and friends from uh, barcelona and the uh, spanish sailing friends can't really get to barcelona because of the uh, travel restrictions and the quarantine and so the uh, the fire service who he worked so closely with are very much his second family here in uh, in Les de Lone. They were here to greet him when he uh, brought the boat here uh, in mid October. And they still look after him as the as if he was one of the one of his one of their own. So and for sure, <clears throat> Didac then the first uh, amateur to finish this race, the first skipper with a, a full-time job who takes time off uh, from his job. He's a little bit of sponsorship. But he uh, funds the program with that sponsorship, but uh, also puts his own a lot of his own money into it, as does uh, his business partner, Pep Costa. So they're now the uh, the co-owners of this boat. So we understand that there will be a dozen uh, members of the fire service uh, on the pontoon to uh, to greet him. We're still expecting to see the uh, fire trucks out. It was harder for them uh, to do anything last night, so we should uh, see some kind of guard of owner or something along these lines. Uh, but uh, obviously one of the things last night was the uh, curfew starts at 6 o'clock. Nice over, overhead uh, shot of the boat, which has been round the world six times in uh, race mode. Nice bit of symmetry. Three uh, Barcelona World Races, three Vondi Globes. As we were saying last night, the uh, understand that the Amoca rule will require the next uh, on the next Vonda globe the boats must be 2004 or newer so in Didac very much at home in the big south enjoys relishes the uh, the big conditions on a very solid and dependable boat and really the exact opposite this morning beautiful serene morning not too much wind and uh, beautiful sunrise
So Dudak says his main uh, main quality as a sailor is perseverance, and uh, I think that's a quality that's shared by so many skippers in this race. And uh, his biggest shortcoming, he says, again, something which is very much in common with other skippers in the race, stubbornness. So now, there we go. We are seeing the uh, fire service, the Sable de Lone uh, fire service having their special welcome in exactly the same spot as they were for him uh, at this time in uh, 2017. And we can hear the fire sirens and the trucks. As I say, they're welcoming back one of their own after uh, a fabulous race. And I think the, uh, the fire service here will be extremely proud of DDAC. Yeah, of course they are. Like they were four years ago. Again, they, um, you know, they, 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 there was a party at, at the, the fire station four years ago for him. And it was really, really incredible, uh, you know, to see that solidarity between those firemen who are incredible people, uh, really. And uh, the fact that he, um, he works, you know, as, as well uh, and doing this race twice is, uh, is is pretty pretty incredible as well. Uh, when you think of the amount of uh, of work that a fireman, I guess, has, and uh, you know the, the activity is just like you know doing the Vendée Globe is something that you should spend all your whole time uh, getting ready for, I guess, right? You know, beautiful shots there uh, from the our drone and uh, we can see the fire service greeting them on both sides of the channel on the left there La Chaume. very very special images and a very special welcome for uh, Didac Costa I'm pretty sure that uh, given current uh, circumstances he wouldn't have been able to have such a raucous welcome last night a beautiful connection then between the Les Sables de Lone, the home of the Vendée Globe where the full race originated and the, uh, the fire service having their own special connection with their own skipper. As close to as I'd imagine they'll uh, ever have in the history of the Vendée Globe. And Didac repaying their uh, solidarity last year and this year with a fantastic race. So a special meal that he's requested, well, not that he's requested, that he's being given. He just asked for something super simple, whatever was available. And that's really a reflection of uh, Didac and his character. Never likes to put anyone to any trouble. But he is being uh, cooked, I think, at this moment, or very shortly, a dish of uh, Galician dish of uh, octopus, French fries, and you'll have a beer, but uh, interesting breakfast, Dan Laura. I'll say <laughs> octopus for your Sunday morning. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, you know, uh, he's looking forward to having that first meal here after uh, after all that um, the, the three month at sea, um, eating, you know, not eating real food really. But um, so yeah, um, I guess he's gonna really appreciate it, especially after a cold night. Uh, I'd see on his boat. I don't know about the beer, though. <laughs> but yeah, we know that uh, 
He's a sailor who struggled uh, during his race to uh, keep eating. Never easy with the uh, the freeze dried food. And he was, I think, uh, encouraged, shall we say, by his team to make sure he was looking after himself uh, and. In the uh, situation, particularly in the south, and the sailors are requiring up to 5,000 calories a day in the cold and uh, when it's really physical. And food really is the uh, is the fuel that the sailors need. And when it's uh, full on, it's not always easy to achieve that, to get the right uh, calorific uh, intake. But there we go, Didac coming in past the uh, Capitanery, the uh, Harbour Master's office, if you like, on the left side. So Dudak's favourite saying is uh, luck favours the prepared and I think uh, that probably is appropriate this time and I think you'd also concede that uh, last time circumstances really conspired against him with that uh, lightning strike one month before the race and then uh, after the start so as much as anything I'm sure these uh, two situations last time are what uh, really encouraged him or uh, spurred him on to devote every, uh, pretty much every waking hour when he wasn't working in the fire service to uh, to work in the boat. Not just uh, because of his limited budget, but also just because uh, that connection with the boat, knowing every millimeter, every uh, fitting. is really uh, crucial to Didac's confidence in his boat. I, would, I think that it's probably true to say there's no skipper in this, uh, in this fleet that can think of who knows his boat better and has sailed more miles than, than Didac. Exception per perhaps being uh, Jean Lacan. And Jean, of course, uh, has mentored Didac a little bit in the uh, end of the 2014 Barcelona World Race. It's well documented now that uh, Didac finished his race with uh, Alish and uh, Jean was sailing his boat back to Brittany and needed a delivery crew or some help and Didac pretty much a few hours after finishing jumped on with Jean just to get the experience uh, of sailing with Le Cam, and he delivered the boat back to Brittany. So Didac's race time, just to remind you, 97 days, 6 hours, 27 minutes and 3 seconds. Just almost uh, 10 days quicker than last time.
finishing one day, 18 hours, 49 minutes uh, after Pip here. And I'm pretty sure that Pip uh, will be uh, on the dock to meet uh, the sailor she was uh, closest with for a lot of the time during her race. And really the sailor which was her uh, one of her benchmarks, both sailing boats of a similar vintage. Different designers, obviously. Pip's boat was a Roland design. So there, coming in uh, past the first of the uh, the Amokas at the Ponton d'Honneur, Stefan and the uh, one time for oceans, one planet, one ocean meets time for oceans. Another uh, former uh, mini competitor. It is one of the notable things of uh, Didac's career, really, and a lot of that is uh, related to the fact he's a full-time job, he's a full-time fire officer, a job that he loves and uh, cherishes. I think perhaps, given the choice, he'd quite like to sail full-time, but he's never had that opportunity. And in the meantime, he enjoys the public service element of his of his job for sure and he's very humble about what he does as uh, indeed another skipper who was um, a fireman Mike Golding he really had to uh, press Mike for uh, details of some of the things he did as a as a fire officer and Didac very reserved, very quiet and uh, discreet about his uh, feats as a fire officer. In fact, one of his uh, his team was telling us yesterday that he was late for a press conference uh, just before the start of this race. And he was late because he'd been uh, at a fire in an old people's home and he was rescuing people out of the uh, burning building. All part of his job, but uh, he was extremely apologetic that it had kept him late for the uh, the press conference. And that really is uh, a reflection of Didac and his character. And then passing Medallia there on the uh, on the right there, with the Union flag on the bow, the boat of uh, Pip here, and next to uh, Alan Rura's La Fabrique. So quite a number of people then uh, on the uh, on the dock and lore for uh, eight thirty in the morning. Of course, always you know people are here for those guys. Like you said, they are heroes. You know, uh, and and it's it's interesting. You were talking about his boat. He, he knows this boat very well. And in fact, uh, I just remember Ellen MacArthur kissing her boat before getting off and not wanting to get off. 
So I don't know if he's going to kiss his boat, but uh, it's, def it's definitely a special relationship between the boat and the sailor, for sure. So here he comes. And on a very personal note, the first uh, skipper to come in with some decent music. <laughs> Perfect wake up um, on a Sunday morning music. This is the way to start your Sunday with uh, Fidak Costa coming to the dock, being welcomed home. At the red carpet, the uh, Ponton d'Honneur. I think this is a song perhaps for the, uh, the boat in the Southern Ocean. Champagne from our CEO, Lord Lagoff. Still got the energy to uh, shake the bottle and uh, beautiful champagne moment then for uh, for Didac. The successful conclusion of his uh, second Vendée Globe. for the boat. The congratulations there from uh, Pep, his, his business partner, is probably his biggest supporter in every sense of the word. And if they uh, fought the financial battles together, he back did the uh, job in the water. And Pep just calling to the, the team of them. So much work and support as well. And Laura there has the uh, PR. A pep there in the in the middle. I think the other uh, younger guy is pep, one pep. It's complicated, but he is the uh, young mini sailor who's uh, moving into the Figaro circuit and probably the uh, next hope you would think uh, of a young sailor coming through to the Vendée Globe, perhaps in. Uh, couple of editions time. It's very much about grassroots in Barcelona just now. Fire surface guys from uh, the Sabbath alone. 
an integral part of the team now, really. Their boots are clean. There we go. A little, uh, little model of his boat from the fire service. The fire service really rescued uh, Didax race 2016-17. He's eternally grateful for that, and he really cherished his relationship. So we know that in the in the group there is uh, Jerome Chevalier, who is the ex chief of the fire service. There, he's one of the uh, DDAX guests of honour today, and, the, and one of the fire service. Uh, Patrick, who was the mechanic who fixed the boat or engineered the. Uh, fixing of the boat last time, located the key part of the generator. Somebody had to drive down to Arkashong and pick it up. And it's hard to <clears throat> consider how DDAC must have felt in these days. And here's Pep here getting on board. Huge respect between the two of them. We used to race on uh, minis against each other. Big rivals in the water this time. But, uh, you know, the same measure of respect and solidarity between the two. They've been through the same uh, same race all the way. Boats of similar vintage. Love to see it. It's interesting because we spoke, spoke at different times with both of them, and although their careers are careers, are, I think they're probably it would be fair to say in slightly different trajectories at the moment. Both of them would go back and race the minis again at the at the drop of a hat. Do that coming to uh, meet the media. <laughs> oh, I think that is Jerome uh, Chevalier, unless I'm wrong. He is now. But, uh, yeah. We're going to do our multilingual interviews. Estás contento en lo menos de 100 días. Sí, en castellano. Sí, en castellano. Sí, era, pues era uno de los objetivos, ¿no? Pues era un barco evidentemente que es muy antiguo, ¿no? Y bueno, está bien ponerse a una, una meta a que te haga pues a poder retarlo todo, ¿no? Y bajar de los 100 días era bueno, un objetivo bonito, ¿no? Ah, y bueno, hemos bajado hasta los 97, ah, si hubiera sido un poco menos, mucho mejor, pero, pero bueno, pero estoy contento, ¿no? Y, y de, de, de haber podido adaptar todo. Y aquí estoy, ¿no? Con, con otra vendida, así que no puedo estar más, más satisfecho. Y he dicho que no podría estar más contento, que era un objetivo muy ambicioso, es un viejo bateau, el mundo de 100 días, pero hay que se poner de grandes objetivos para todo dar. Y he dicho que lo ha todo dado. Es verdad que a la fin, él habría podido tener dos días de más, si no fuera por la meteo, pero él es muy feliz. Ah, but it was, it was not happy. Happy. It was not much productive with the weather. 
Diferente del primero, ¿por qué? Sí, sobre todo porque bueno, he podido pues, navegar más, más rápido, ¿no? El otro estuvo muy, muy limitado por las velas y esta pues he podido pues, a, pues, darlo todo prácticamente, ¿no? Siempre hay problemas, pero básicamente ha estado todo bien. Y bueno, estoy contento por eso, ¿no? Pues por, por haber cuidado a todo y creo pues por el, por el barco que que tengo, ¿no? Pues creo que he hecho una, una regata y eso es lo que me ha hecho pensar que, que se despecho, ¿no? De, de haber conseguido por un tiempo. Sí, y dice que la diferencia es que él ha podido realmente donar a causa de voiles, de nuevas voiles que lo han dejado navegar tan rápido que él ha querido y que por la edad del barco, él piensa que él ha realmente todo donado y que él no podría haber tenido una mejor regata que la que él ha tenido. Él es muy contento. Él es muy contento. Él es muy contento. Tú has dicho que tú as vu des montagnes, c'est que tu te rappelais que tu es fier quand même alpiniste quand même. Quand tu as vu montagnes au Pacifique Sud, tu te rappelais de que tu esquies, de que tu as alpinisme au moins. Si, un peu aussi, parce qu'elles étaient vraiment très grandes, surtout la seconde mitad du Pacifique, un peu plus, ça a été avec un peu de mal temps, et incluso, pues, c'est difficile de ir tout le rapide que se pouvait avoir été, non Mais bon, c'est la vérité, non Et en les mares du Sud, tu rencontres ces choses, donc, que, bon, oui. Pues fue realmente un momento impresionante, ¿no? Este, la última semana del Pacífico, los últimos tres días fueron, fueron duros y espectaculares también, ¿no? Por las condiciones que había. Sí, y dice que el último día del Pacífico era realmente duro, pero también realmente espectacular, que es verdad que pensaba a montañas, porque eran de verdad montañas, que a veces se le hacía ir un poco, incluso un poco lento, pero que se vale la pena, porque es duro, pero es bueno al mismo tiempo. Es difícil, pero es tan hermoso. Si tú quieres ir a la carpia en tu bateau, tu vieux bateau, porque es quand même la sienne, Deux tours du monde avec, tu as pensé à elle, tu as dit, je suis sur ton bateau, je vais l'emmener jusqu'au bout. Has pensat à la Ellen MacArthur, parce que c'est la dernière fois Oui, 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 Creo que estaba por ahí los días para llegar, excepto el Atlántico Norte, que ahí sí que he tardado tres, tres días más de lo que he tardado ella. Así que lo tenía muy presente, ¿no? Era como un, bueno, una referencia también para mí, ¿no? Porque evidentemente estar delante con este barco, pues no puedo estar. Así que bueno, tengo estos objetivos que sean, que sean bonitos, ¿no? Y aparte, pues de luchar con los barcos de alrededor, que pues, he hecho lo, podido, lo que he podido también, pues este era la otra. Y él ha dicho que en realidad pensé mucho a él, porque es el referente sobre su bateau, y que même cada vez que él pasaba un cap, él comparaba su tiempo al tiempo de la Mercator, y que con un mismo bateau, él no iba a ganar la vendée, pero que después era con ella que él que, que so hacía la comparación, y a cada cap, ellos eran más o menos al mismo tiempo, hasta la fin de l'Atlantique, y él pensé mucho a él. Y dice a Fonsa Tatjana Lecam que también era como un manto, Fonsa, es para tú. Sí, realmente mucho, ¿no? Para mí Fonsa Lecam es una inspiración, ¿no? Y realmente pues creo que es lo mejor que te puedes fijar porque, bueno, por los resultados que tiene también pues es evidente, ¿no? Ha hecho una regata impresionante, ya lo hizo la anterior edición y esta vez también, ¿no? Y bueno, pues eso ya. Sí que pienso mucho, ¿no? Todo durante la regata pues lo estaba siguiendo y me parece increíble y eso pues, para mí es una, es una inspiración. Sí, y dice que Jean Lecam es el referente perfecto, es justo perfecto, uh, que por él es una gran inspiración, que él ha seguido esa regata, que evidentemente él ha hecho una bandera extraordinaria, que vous l'avez déjà fait en el pasado, y que por él es un proyecto, él admira mucho cómo él gère su proyecto, y dice que por él es la inspiración perfecta. Por él es un proyecto que organiza todo el mundo. Porque cuando él está aquí, está completamente barrio, y él prende de vacaciones, tú haces el tour del mundo. Los bombes, cuando te vienes a la feina, ¿pensas que están bojos de que tú vayas a vacaciones, de que te vayas a vacaciones? Bueno, es, es lo que hay que hacer, eh, bueno, es, eh, para poder estar aquí, ¿no? Pues hay que, hay, hay que trabajar eh, eh, y, bueno, pues es lo que me ha, me ha tocado, ¿no? Navegar me gusta mucho, pero también hay que trabajar, que también, pues, eh, es un trabajo que me gusta el de bombero y, pues, lo tengo que combinar por las circunstancias que, que son, ¿no? Y, bueno, pues voy a volver feliz al trabajo, sí, con unas buenas vacaciones a la espalda. Y él dice que, bueno, es lo que hay que hacer, ¿no? Trabajar para poder hacer lo que uno que es un trabajo que él le gusta también. Y que, bueno, él entra al trabajo con una buena vacaciones, ¿no? Y que tiene una buena vacación, así que ahora puede volver a trabajar. Dans ta façon de naviguer pour avoir les jeux de sécurité dans les deux pays. Donc, est-ce que tu prépares pour tenir la sécurité comme un comme un bombé à l'océan? Bueno, c'est un travail différent, non? Mais bon, c'est des circonstances aussi que, 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 que
esto quizá puede, puede, estar, puede ayudar a estar más tranquilo ¿no? en sus situaciones, pero son cosas diferentes. ¿no? Il dit que c'est il dit que c'est des boulots très très différents, mais en même temps c'est vrai qu'il y a pas mal de situations stressantes et que parfois ça aide de savoir se tenir calme. Sometimes being calm helps. How was this night on board? Bougez très bougez, il y avait beaucoup de mer de fond. Ah, there was a lot. There was a lot of mer. Mais dès que c'est pas une nuit qui fait la différence. But it's one more night. What is that? You know, after. De descansar, de explicar quizá algún día el barco, no, no tener que pensar en, en la meteo ¿no? y, en, y en hacer routings y bueno, desconectar un poco ¿no? porque también uh, no solamente han sido los tres meses de la regata, sino este, los últimos seis o ocho meses han sido de locos, ¿no? uh, así que, que realmente pues, es un descanso ¿no? de tanto tiempo sin parar. Et dès qu'il a envie de se reposer aussi, de déconnecter du bateau, de ne pas devoir faire attention à la météo et au routing, et que ce n'est pas juste les trois mois de la Vendée Globe, les six mois, les six mois avant étaient super intenses, et que là, il a juste envie de se reposer. Il a juste envie de se reposer, parce que tout était tellement intense. Je pense que... 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 First interviews with the Didac, and he's going to come up, uh, enjoy his, his meal, and then join us uh, for his press conference. In, uh, in a short time, it will be uh, streamed live. A nice welcome. So, thank you for joining us uh, for the arrival of Didac Costa into the channel. Big thanks to Jaco, uh, Jack Gares, the uh, race director. And in fact, uh, Jaco has done three, uh, all three races uh, for DDAC, Barcelona World Race 2014, and the two Bondi Globes. Special relationship with them as well. And uh, I know that Jaco has a huge respect for DDAC and what he does. Oh, we love you all. 